Wow, what's this? Can someone come in here? I heard my husband's screams coming from the bathroom. I ran to the bathroom and was shocked to see him and screamed. When I looked at my mother in law and sister in law, they looked as if they were shocked. The culprits must be them. I heard their conversation in the morning. They were saying that they were going to end me. The real target was me. I dread to think what would have happened if I had been in the bath. I would never forgive them. As I made up my mind to do so, my husband, who was standing next to me, seemed to feel the same way. I'm Nicole, 35, and I work in a customer call center. My husband, Marvin, is my age and works in a factory. I met my husband at a 24 hour gym. I have been going to the gym for three years now. So I know who I see often. I didn't talk to anyone in particular and often exercised in silence while listening to music on my earphones. One morning, as I was about to use a machine at the gym, the belt on the machine came off. I was in a panic, thinking I might have broken it since that had never happened before. No staff was available to help me at the time, and I was scurrying around half conscious. No matter what I did, I couldn't get it back together, and it was my husband who reached out to me. Are you alright? It's been coming off a lot lately. And he fixed it easily. Thank you very much. My husband's body was muscular and very fit, and he was one of those people I often saw. We began to talk whenever we saw each other. We had a lot in common. Such as being the same age and having jobs with irregular working time, and we found ourselves getting along very well. Even though it had not been that long since we met, I could talk with my husband, and without any formality, as if we had known each other for a long time. He was very comfortable. Three months after the first day we spoke, we decided to start dating. After two years of dating, we decided to get married. I was very happy when he proposed to me, and I said yes right away. But my husband asked me if I would come live with his mother and sister. I had no intention of moving in with them. I had no idea what to say. My husband went on to say that he would lock our room for privacy. I know you work irregular hours too, and you don't have to do the house chores or anything like that. My mom and sister don't work, so they can do it. If they say anything, I will do my best to protect you. Mom's got a bad leg, and she's having a lot of trouble without a man to help her. That's what he said. I could tell that he was making sure to make my life comfortable. I think he also knows that I don't really want it. I had heard that my mother in law had fallen in the bathroom and was hospitalized for a while. Even if that was the case, I was troubled. I can't agree to it willingly. Could you let me think about it after I meet your mother in law and sister in law? My husband looked a little relieved when I said that. A week later, we went to greet his family. My husband lost his father in law five years ago. His mother in law was an office worker until she retired. My sister in law is three years older than us. Divorced and recently starting living with her mother again. Welcome and thank you for coming. When we entered the house, my mother in law greeted us with a smile. Hearing my mother in law's voice, my sister in law also came to the door and said, Nice to meet you. I am Marvin's sister and congratulations on your marriage. She said cheerfully. We then talked in the living room for a while, and both my mother in law and sister in law were very cheerful people, and I kept laughing while talking. I think I was able to talk with them without any worries. Did you hear from Marvin about moving in together? Sorry, I'm the one with the bad leg, my mother in law said apologetically as we were leaving. I won't interfere with your newlywed life. And my sister in law continued. I met them both and talked to them directly, which made me think it might be okay for us to live together, so I answered, No, no, I'd love to. 
They all looked relieved and thanked me. I would be lying if I said I was not anxious, but I felt that with these people, I would be able to build a bright home. A month later, I moved in with my in-laws. As my husband had said, our room was locked and my mother-in-law and sister-in-law were not allowed to enter. I was excited to think that our married life was about to begin. My husband and I both work irregular hours and have jobs with night shifts. We might often cross paths when we pack up our moving boxes, but we will cherish the time we have together. My mother-in-law and sister-in-law were as cheerful and kind as when we greeted them. They did most of the house chores and I only needed to help sometimes. Since my mother-in-law seemed to have trouble walking, I tried to do what I could instead of her. One day, however, my husband was at work and I was off after a night shift. I came home in the morning and woke up in the late afternoon to find my mother-in-law and sister-in-law sitting at the dining room table. Hey, why don't you try to be a little more active doing the house chores? I was so surprised that I could not say anything. It's a good thing you're in such good health even though you stay in your room all the time. I thought I was dreaming because she was talking like a different person from my usual mother-in-law and sister-in-law. Uh, I'm sorry, I'll be careful from now on. I replied, cringing. Don't say unnecessary things to Marvin, said my sister-in-law. Yeah, I got it. I answered, went to the sink and washed my face. I was still not sure if it was a dream or a reality, but I did think that I had relied too much on my mother-in-law and sister-in-law for house chores, even though my husband had told me that was okay. I felt a little remorseful and took on many household chores that day. However, my mother-in-law and sister-in-law did not seem to like my house chores and repeatedly warned me about them. While I was cooking dinner, my mother-in-law and sister-in-law were sitting on the couch watching TV, and my husband came home. Nicole is making dinner? You must be tired after a night shift. He looked surprised and was about to say something to my mother-in-law and sister-in-law. No, I wanted you to eat my home-cooked food once in a while, so I'm in charge of dinner tonight. My husband looked very happy when I replied. My mother-in-law and sister-in-law seemed like different people during the meal than they were during the day. It's so delicious, Nicole. You are a very good cook. You should teach me how to cook next time. They were so cheerful. I thought they must have two different personalities. After that, my mother-in-law and sister-in-law started giving me a hard time on the days when my husband was away. I used to live alone, so it's not that I can't do household chores. I was a little bothered by the warnings they give me because my mother-in-law and sister-in-law were always dissatisfied with my ability to do household chores. One day, while my husband and I were watching TV, my mother-in-law got up to go to the bathroom. She was having a bad day and seemed to be having a hard time walking, so I got up and helped her up. A few steps later, my mother-in-law suddenly fell. Ouch! Nicole! Why are you pushing me? She said, and she was cowering, holding her leg. I, of course, did not push her. From my point of view, it looked as if my mother-in-law had fallen on purpose. Hearing my mother-in-law's voice, my husband ran over to her and said, Mom, are you okay? Nicole, did you push her? And looked at me. When I tried to deny it, she pushed me so hard. Actually, it happened a lot when Marvin wasn't around. It was awful because I knew that she didn't want to live with us. And made a crying imitation. Then my sister-in-law came out of her room. Mom, did she do it to you again? She deliberately glared at me. I could not understand what is happening. Nicole... If you have a complaint, tell me. You don't have to push my mom. My husband yelled at me. In all the time I've spent with my husband, this is the first time he's ever raised his voice at me. My husband didn't see the moment my mother-in-law fell. 
I was shocked that he assumed I did it and that he didn't believe I wouldn't do such a thing. I did not do such a thing. I started to cry as I said this, so I ran away to my room. As I cried, I looked at my sister-in-law's face and she seemed to be grinning. It was definitely on purpose. After a while, my husband came to my room. I'm sorry for yelling at you. Maybe it looked like you pushed her when you actually supported her because mom is having trouble walking to begin with. So you don't need to worry, he said. I was glad he apologized, but he didn't seem to believe in his wildest dreams that his mother had intentionally fallen. It also seemed as if he didn't believe me completely. I then stopped supporting my mother-in-law while working because I didn't want to be accused of anything. After a month later, I came home at 4 a.m. after working the night shift. I entered the house quietly so as not to make a sound, since that is the time when everyone is usually asleep. However, that day I felt as if someone was awake. I thought it might be my husband, and as I walked toward the living room, I heard a whisper from the bathroom. I put my ear to the bathroom door. This must be the end of my daughter-in-law. Yeah, this will be the end for her. I heard the voices of my mother-in-law and sister-in-law saying that. Their conversation sounded dangerous. I was terrified of what they would do to me. I went to my room being careful not to make any noise so that the two of them would not find me. I went to bed without taking a bath, but I couldn't sleep because I couldn't stop thinking about what had just happened. I was going to a friend's wedding the next day. I hardly slept at all, but for fear of what they might do to me if I stayed in this house, I decided to leave the house for the day. I'm going shopping for the wedding tomorrow and I left the house at the same time as him. You didn't sleep much, didn't you? He seemed to be worried about me. I called my husband that day and we decided to have dinner and then went home together. I could not talk to my husband about what has happened this morning. When we arrived home, my husband said, There's a TV program I want to watch today. He sat down on the sofa. My mother-in-law saw this and seemed to be very happy. Nicole, you need to leave the house early in the morning to attend a wedding, right? Go take a bath first, she said. I thought it was strange that she suggested I take a bath. I am usually the last to take a bath. I found it suspicious, so I went to the bathroom to look around and saw some black liquid floating in the bathtub. I couldn't quite figure out what it was, perhaps some kind of strange bath salts but it smelled somewhat peculiar. But I am afraid to go in first because of the conversation I heard this morning. I made sure my mother-in-law and sister-in-law are talking in the kitchen and told my husband. You still have 30 minutes before the show starts, so why don't you go ahead and take a bath? I say in a voice that only my husband can hear. You are right, I'll go take a quick bath. And then my husband headed for the bathroom. I sat down on the couch instead of my husband. What the hell? Can someone come in here for a minute? I heard my husband screaming from the bathroom. I think it was only about three seconds after I heard him get into the bath. I rushed over and saw that my husband's body was stained black. I screamed in shock. I looked behind me and saw my mother-in-law and sister-in-law standing there looking pale. What is going on? My husband looked panicked. I asked my mother-in-law, You prepared the bath, didn't you? What is that black liquid? My mother-in-law was cringing. I thought you went to take the bath, Nicole. My sister-in-law is standing next to her in a cold sweat. Then my husband smelled the liquid and said, Isn't this hair color by any chance? What are you going to do if it gets on your skin? It will be hard to get it off, right? Neither my mother-in-law nor sister-in-law said anything, so my husband got out of the bath and moved to the living room. I had read on the internet that makeup remover would remove it, so I lent my husband the makeup remover and he tried his best to scrub it off, but it didn't seem to be coming off. 
I was horrified to think what would have happened if I had been in there. I have to go to a wedding the next day with black all over my body. On top of that, I have very sensitive skin. I had my hair dyed once, but even though I had it done with a skin-friendly colorant, it hurt so much during the process that I had to stop halfway through. My scalp was quite tingly and sore and I was sick for a while after that. If I were to take a bath with hair color in it, I would not only be black all over. I would probably have been in serious trouble with itching and pain all over my body. Even scrubbing hard to remove it would have been very rough on my skin. I am horrified to think that my mother-in-law and sister-in-law knew about my sensitive skin and did it. I helped my husband get the hair color off his skin. Seeing us frantically trying to remove it, my mother-in-law and sister-in-law looked panic and were whispering something to each other. It wasn't completely off, but it had gotten to the point where it was much less noticeable. I need to talk to all of you. Please have a seat here. I called them to the dining room. I heard something this morning. Around 4 a.m., you two were in the bathroom, right? My sister-in-law replied, What are you talking about? Of course we were sleeping in the early morning. She said vigorously, but she was impatient. What were they talking about? My husband asked. They said that this is the end of his wife, I said, and my husband looked surprised. What do you mean by that? He asks. Then my mother-in-law said, You were just sleepwalking. You don't have any proof of that. I pointed at my husband and said, This is the proof. And when we came home, you offered me a bath, didn't you? I thought it was strange. I told you that I will attend a wedding tomorrow and that my skin was sensitive, right? My sister-in-law said, It was just a prank. My husband said, A prank? My sister-in-law became silent when my husband said with a frightening look on his face. Then my mother-in-law said, Nicole, it's all because of you. You don't cooperate with the house chores at all. She sounded like a child. Then my husband said, Are you serious about that? Nicole works, so she does the house chores whenever she can, right? There are things you're allowed to do and things you're not allowed to do just because you were unhappy. Don't be silly. He yelled at my mother-in-law and sister-in-law. I have put up with unreasonable things said to me until now. Do you have such a grudge against me? There is no way this can be just a prank. I absolutely will not forgive you guys. Hearing our words, my mother-in-law and sister-in-law began to cry. I'm sorry, we went too far. Then my husband said, I will never forgive you either. I don't want to be with a family with people who do such things, and I want you to leave the house tomorrow. You can't ask us to leave, we have nowhere to go. My mother-in-law said, but my husband answered, I don't know about that, there's no way I can live with you anymore. Get ready to leave by tomorrow. When I returned to my room with my husband, I burst into tears that I had been trying to hold back. I had been scared ever since I heard the conversation this morning. I'm sorry I let you take a bath after hearing that conversation. I cried and apologized to Marvin. It's okay, I'm really glad you didn't go in there. I know you've been through some tough times, and I'm sorry I didn't recognize it. Marvin hugged me. The next day, my husband forced my mother-in-law and sister-in-law out. My in-laws had moved just before we got married, and this house is in my husband's name, so he has the right to it. He changed the locks on the house while I was away at, at a wedding. Neither my mother-in-law nor sister-in-law work. They had a little extra money that we had given them for living expenses, but it was not enough to rent the house. They asked for a relative's house, but apparently my husband had told his relatives about what has happened, and they didn't welcome my in-laws. They both took out loans to rent a house, but they can't get approved at all because they don't work. 
They have little or no work experience, and since this story has become a rumor in the neighborhood, they can't even get a part time job. Now they're both sleeping in an internet cafe. I think they deserved it. Now it's just me and my husband in our lives. We often don't see each other because of the irregular work hours, but when we have time, the two of us go to the gym together to exercise or go for a morning run. I feel very refreshed and spend time with him every day. On days when we can have dinner together, I cook a home cooked meal. You've just finished a night shift, so you don't have to work so hard. But I am happy that my husband can enjoy my cooking. It's so delicious. Have your cooking skills improved again? My husband praises me every time. Such time is my happiness. There may be more difficulties in the future, but I hope we can stay together and help each other.